1 Samuel 14 18-45, through the Bible. Chapter 14. Theme, Jonathan's victory over the Philistines, Saul's hasty order is overridden. Jonathan's victory over the Philistines. Once again Jonathan gains a great victory, but Saul takes the credit for it and reveals his jealousy. He actually would have destroyed his own son. Chapter 14 gives us the strategy of battle that Jonathan used against the Philistines. It is said that this is the chapter which the British General Allenby was reading the night before he made his successful attack upon the Turks in World War I. To me this is an interesting sidelight. I am unable to give you the details of the strategy of this battle since I am not well acquainted with the geography of the region, on a trip to Palestine I wanted to go there, but our time was limited, neither am I a military man. I am sure that when General Allenby was reading this chapter, it was a thrilling revelation to him to see how Jonathan executed his military tactics. General Allenby was a Christian who knew his Bible. Apparently Jonathan's strategy was to take his men through a narrow pass. Here, with the few weapons they had to fight with, Jonathan's army had a distinct advantage. A similar battle took place at Thermopylae, a mountain pass in eastern Greece, where the Greeks, although greatly outnumbered, were able to hold off the Persian army. In Israel's case, this strategy certainly worked to their advantage since Israel was hopelessly outnumbered and almost unarmed. We will pass over the details of this battle and look instead at the great spiritual lesson that is here. And Saul said unto Ahia, Bring hither the ark of God. For the ark of God was at that time with the children of Israel, 1 Samuel 14 18. Saul should not have taken the ark to the battlefield. As we have seen before in the days of Samuel, the children of Israel used the ark in a superstitious manner, thinking it would help them win their battles. Apparently Saul has the same reason. So the Lord saved Israel that day and the battle passed over unto Bethaven, 1 Samuel 14 23. In spite of Saul's action in bringing out the ark, Jonathan's strategy won the battle on the human side. God is with this young man, it is too bad that he did not live long. God saved Israel that day. Saul's hasty order is overridden. And the men of Israel were distressed that day, for Saul had adjured the people, saying, Cursed be the man that eateth any food until evening, that I may be avenged on mine enemies. So none of the people tasted any food. And all they of the land came to a wood, and there was honey upon the ground. And when the people were come into the wood, behold, the honey dropped, but no man put his hand to his mouth, for the people feared the oath. But Jonathan heard not when his father charged the people with the oath, wherefore he put forth the end of the rod that was in his hand, and dipped it in an honeycomb, and put his hand to his mouth, and his eyes were enlightened, 1 Samuel 14 24-27. It is interesting to note that Jonathan did not know about his father's strange order that no man was to eat until the battle was won. Actually Jonathan had already won the battle. Now we are beginning to see the real nature of Saul. Jonathan gained the victory, and Saul takes credit for it. He is not willing to give the credit to his son. His modesty is gone, and his jealousy is revealed. Then answered one of the people, and said, Thy father straightly charged the people with an oath, saying, Cursed be the man that eateth any food this day. And the people were faint. Then said Jonathan, My father hath troubled the land, see, I pray you, how mine eyes have been enlightened, because I tasted a little of this honey. How much more, if haply the people had eaten freely today of the spoil of their enemies which they found. For had there not been now a much greater slaughter among the Philistines? 1 Samuel 14 28-30. It was a foolish command that Saul had given. The men were weary they had fought a battle and won. They needed something to eat. Saul said, I will not let anyone eat anything until I am avenged of my enemies. His modesty was absolutely gone. And Saul built an altar unto the Lord, the same was the first altar that he built unto the Lord, 1 Samuel 14 35. He actually built an altar to the Lord and offered sacrifices. And Saul said, Let us go down after the Philistines by night, and spoil them until the morning light, and let us not leave a man of them. And they said, Do whatsoever seemeth good unto thee. Then said the priest, Let us draw near hither unto God. And Saul asked counsel of God, Shall I go down after the Philistines? Wilt thou deliver them into the hand of Israel? But he answered him not that day, 1 Samuel 14 36-37. God is not using this man at all. And Saul said, Draw ye near hither, all the chief of the people, and know and see wherein this sin hath been this day. For, as the Lord liveth, which sabbath Israel, though it be in Jonathan my son, he shall surely die. But there was not a man among all the people that answered him, 1 Samuel 14 38-39.
Saul, you see, is not willing to take the blame himself. He says that someone else has sinned. The army stood silently. They knew the victory was Jonathan's. And now Saul was saying, the reason God did not answer me was because someone did not obey me and broke the oath. The army knew that Jonathan had tasted the honey, and they knew that Saul was putting up a tremendous front at this time. They stood in silence because he was the king. Then said he unto all Israel, Be ye on one side, and I and Jonathan my son will be on the other side. And the people said unto Saul, Do what seemeth good unto thee, 1 Samuel 14 40. The army is not saying much. Therefore Saul said unto the Lord God of Israel, Give a perfect lot. And Saul and Jonathan were taken, but the people escaped, 1 Samuel 14 41. Saul believed Jonathan was guilty. And Saul said, Cast lots between me and Jonathan my son. And Jonathan was taken. Then Saul said to Jonathan, Tell me what thou hast done. And Jonathan told him, and said, I did but taste a little honey with the end of the rod that was in mine hand, and, lo, I must die, 1 Samuel 14 42-43. Jonathan was guilty, guilty of doing what Saul had not wanted him to do. Saul had said, Cursed be the man that eateth any food this day. But was this something to die for? And Saul answered, God do so and more also, for thou shalt surely die, Jonathan. And the people said unto Saul, Shall Jonathan die, who hath wrought this great salvation in Israel? God forbid, as the Lord liveth, there shall not one hair of his head fall to the ground, for he hath wrought with God this day. So the people rescued Jonathan, that he died not, 1 Samuel 14 44-45. Saul would actually destroy his own son if he stood in his way. Why? Because Saul is jealous of Jonathan. He wants all of the glory for himself. The army had remained silent through all of Saul's rantings and ravings, but when Jonathan's life was at stake, they no longer kept quiet. We are now seeing the true character of Saul. Later on we will see how he will act in direct disobedience to God. He is going to do something that will bring tragedy to the nation Israel. Had not God intervened, it would have meant the extermination of the nation. Saul is revealing that he is not God's man at all. He is actually Satan's man. We will see in the next chapter that Saul is not obeying God any longer, he is following his own devices. Finally the Spirit of God will no longer speak to him. God will no longer give him leading, and he will turn from God to the demonic world. Then we will study that remarkable incident when Saul actually consults the witch of Endor. It is a section with a great lesson for us in these days in which we are seeing the manifestation of demonism, the occult, the worship of Satan, and astrology. God help America today because there are many Sauls abroad.